Hello and welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Splunk.com here in the virtual studios in Silicon Valley broadcasting around the world. It's a virtual event. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We've got a great guest, Zach Brown, Chief Executive Officer of McLaren Racing. Really looking forward to this interview, Zach. Welcome to theCUBE. Well, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. So we have a huge fan base in the tech community. A lot of geeks, a lot of the nerds, they love the tech behind the sport. Uh, and Netflix's Driving to Survive series has absolutely catapulted the popularity of F1 in the tech community. So uh, congratulations on all the success in that program and on the, and on, on the track. Thank you very much. It's been a, uh, it's been a good run. We've uh, won our first race in a while, but we still have a, a ways to go to get in that uh, world championship that uh, so, we're hunting for. So for the techies out there and the folks in our audience that aren't familiar with the specifics of the racing team and the dynamics behind it, take a minute to explain what you guys are doing. Uh, so McLaren Racing, uh, which has a variety of uh, racing teams, uh, a Formula One team, an IndyCar team, an Extreme E team, and an eSports team, uh, we're the second most successful Formula One team in the history of sport now, 183 wins, 182 uh, when I joined, 20 world championships, and uh, we're, we're close to 1,000 people to, to run a couple of racing cars, and uh, currently third in the championship uh, with Lando Norris and uh, Daniel Ricciardo. So talk about the, um, the, the dynamics of the sport. Obviously data is a big part of it. Uh, we see a lot of the coverage, but you can see anything can happen overnight, it's very quick. Um, Technology's been being a, playing a big role in the sport. What's your vision on how that's evolving? Are you happy with where things are? Uh, and where do you see it going? Yeah, it, uh, some interesting stats. So um, the car that qualifies first at the beginning of the year, if you didn't touch it, would be last by the end of the year. So that's the pace of a development of a, of a Formula One car. We change a, uh, and develop a new part on the car every 14 minutes, 365 uh, days days a year um, and technology plays a huge role uh, it's it's probably the most technical um, evolved sport in, in the world uh, both safety data uh, the innovation it's it's awesome and, and what a lot of people don't know is a lot of what we develop in our Formula One car ends up in other parts of the world whether it was ventilators that we helped develop for the UK government uh, to working with our uh, various partners or safety and innovation in the automotive industry you know, I love the, I always love the IOT, Internet of Things story around cars because sensors or instrumentation is a big part of it. Um, and it all comes together, so it's pretty, it's not simple. No. Give a feel, give a taste a little bit about what's it, how complicated is it, how you guys pay attention to the details, what's important. Take us through some of the, some of the inside the ropes around the IOT or the, the sensors and all the data coming together. Yeah, so we have over 300 sensors on our, our race car. We collect the one and a half terabytes uh, of data every race weekend and, and we have a thousand people. Um, and, and the strong majority of those are working around data and, and technology as opposed to physically touching the car. Out of those thousand people, you probably only have about 60 or 70 that are actually touch the race car at a, at a race weekend. We've been doing connected cars for about 25 years, so that's kind of a new thing here to, to most yeah. people, but we've been communicating back and forth with our race car for, for decades uh, all around the world, and what a lot of people don't realize is it all starts in our mission control back in our factory in Woking, England, so wherever we are around the world, the racing team actually starts in England. So I want to ask you about the personalities on the team. How big is the staff? What's the makeup of the personnel? So you got the drivers. They're critical. And they're a very dynamic personalities. We'll come to a side question on that later. But what's the staff look like on, when you guys put this together? So you get you get race day and you got back office support. What's the team look like? Yeah. So you've got a, a, about a thousand people that that make up the collective team. You'll have about a hundred in marketing. Uh, you'll have about a hundred in finance, HR, and then you kind of get to the, the racing team, if you'd like, 800 people. You have about 100 people traveling to uh, each race, uh, about 50 people back at the factory working with data and communications at a, at a Grand Prix weekend, and then everybody else is designing, manufacturing, production, laminating. So we run 24-7 shifts, uh, three shifts uh, in certain parts. Uh, we develop uh, 85% of the car changes of what's allowed to be changed the start of the year yeah. to the, to the end of the year. So the development is, is unbelievable. I know you're here in the U.S. for the U.S. Grand Prix in Austin um, coming up. I'm just curious, how do the cars get transported? Uh, so uh, <laughs> when, when we're traveling around the world, uh, they, they travel on 747s and, and fl are flown around the world. And then when we're in Europe, we have about 18 trucks 
that we're commuting around uh, when we're kind of in the European part of the, the circuit is usually yeah. the middle of the, the year, but when we're going to Australia or Singapore or Bahrain, those are, yeah. those are on planes. Formula One actually does that. They give us an allocation of, yeah. of space and then we have to write a check if we need <laughs> more space than we're, uh, we're allowed. Yeah, and that brings up the security question because obviously there's a, there's a lot of fans. A lot of people are into it. Also, there's potentially security risks. Have you guys thought about that? Obviously, like physical moving the, the supply chain around from event to event, but also technology risk. Um, how do you guys think about security? Yeah, it's, it's critically important. We've had, uh, fortunately, we've not had any breach of our technology. We have had a breach in the late 90s of our radio communications. And uh, it was in Australia, Mika Hakkinen and, and a fan uh, who I think was probably having some fun and we were able to break into our radio channel and actually asked Mika to pit. He pitted, team wasn't ready, <laughs> and fortunately we were running one too, but we actually had to reverse the drivers, so security yeah. is critically yeah. important. Yeah, probably Kitty Scrib there and they oh, look, I just hacked the radio, I was talking to the driver. That is like, a funny story, but it could be serious. I mean, now it could be know, very serious. Now you have all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah, and, and you know, there's a lot of money at stake, you know, so you know, we were fortunate in this particular instance, it didn't hurt us because we were running one too, so we could reverse the drivers and the right guy won. Um, but, you know, that could decide a, a world championship and you have, you know, tens of millions of dollars. Uh, on the line, but even besides the economics, we want to win races. You know, it's f what's funny is that you guys have a lot of serious on the line stakes with these races, but you're known for having a lot of fun. The team, the team dynamic. I have to ask you when you finished on the podium one and two, you did a shoey with the yeah, <laughs> with yeah. the drivers. Was, How'd that go down? It was pretty pretty a big spectacle online and and on TV. Yeah, it was it was good fun. It's something obviously Daniel uh, Ricardo is is kind of developed as his thing when he uh, when he wins and uh, when we were uh, before we went on the podium, he said to me, "You're gonna do the shoey." Yes, of course I'm gonna do the yeah, shoey. Yeah. You gotta do the shoey. Get shoey-y. on the podium. So <laughs> we acted like a bunch of twelve year old kids yeah. uh, on the podium, but that's we're just big kids going motor racing at the end of the day. Well, I got to say, you guys come across really strong as a team, and I love the fun and you know competitive side. So congratulations on that. Thank it's you. always good. On the competitive side, take me through the advantage, driving the advantage with data, because that's really the theme here at .conf, which is Splunk, which they're a big partner, as well as your other sponsors. Data's big, you know, and it's driving an advantage where do you see that coming from? Take us through where you guys see the advantages. Yeah, so you know everything we do is is precision. You know every second, every tenth counts, and um, you know you can get all this data in, but what do you do with this data? And the humans can't uh, re uh, react as quickly yeah. as as you know people like Splunk who can help us uh, not only collect data but help us understand data. And um, you know typically there's one pit stop, which can be the difference between winning and, yeah. and losing. Um, you have all these different scenarios playing out with weather, with tire wear, competition, and so you know we live by data. We didn't uh, win in in Russia when we uh, could have, and it was because we got a bit emotionally caught up in the excitement of trying to win the race instead of staying disciplined and focused on yeah. on data. And so it's a very data driven sport. When I'm on the pit wall, there's a thing called racer instinct, which is my 30 years in the sport and uh, your experience and your kind of your gut to make decisions. And every time our team makes a decision that I'm sitting there going, I'm not sure that was the right decision. Yeah. They're staring at data. I'm not. I'm trusting my 30 years of experience. They beat me nine out of 10 times. Yeah, and you know, this is a huge topic too in the industry. Explainable AI is one of the hottest trends in computer science where there's so much algorithms involved the gut instinct is now coming back. What algorithms are available, knowing when to deploy what algorithms or what data to pay attention to is a huge new gut factor. Yep. Can yep. you explain how the young drivers and the experienced folks in the industry are dealing with this new instinctful data-driven Yeah, piece? that's you know that's what we have 50 people back at the, the factory doing and they're looking at all sorts of information coming in and then they're taking that information and they're feeding it to our head of strategy who's then head, uh, feeding it to our racing director, who's getting all these data points in from tire to performance to reliability, and then the human data from both drivers coming through their engineers, and then he gets all that information in. He has to process it immediately and make decisions, but it's it's a data-driven sport. I saw Lando walking around, got a selfie with him, it's great, everyone's loving it on Twitter. My family's like, get an autograph. The future of the sport, he's a young young driver, so that instinct's coming in. The future of the sport comes up all the time. The tires are a big discussion point, but also you've got a lot of presets going on, a lot of data, a lot of going on. You see the future where there's remote 
you know, kind of video game. You're in the pit wall and you can make decisions and deploy on behalf of the drivers. Is that something that's... Well, that technology is there and we used to do that, but now it's been outlawed because there's a real push to make sure the drivers are driving the car. So that technology is here. It has been deployed yeah. in the past. We could do it, but we're trying to find as a sport the balance between, you know, letting the driver do it so he or she might make a mistake and add a little <laughs> bit of excitement to it. So um, we now, there are certain protocols on what we communicate. Um, we can't, um, everything has to be driver fed into the car so we can now, you'll hear all sorts of codes that we're talking through, which there are um, about 300 different adjustments the driver can make on the steering wheel, which is unbelievable. And so that's us seeing information, getting data in, coming to conclusions that we're giving him or her information that we think will help make the car faster. A lot of new dimensions for drivers to think about when they're being successful with the gut, the track, data, everything's kind of coming together. Yeah, it's amazing um, when you listen to these drivers on the radio, you forget that they're going 200 plus miles an hour because they sound quite relaxed in this very you know, open and easy communication of here's what I'm feeling with, again, we're talking all these codes, and then we all, because we can hear each other, there's a lot of trickery uh, that, that goes on. Yeah. So for a driver to be going 200 miles an hour, taking this information yeah. and then know what code we're talking, are we kind of throwing a code out there to throw the competition <laughs> off, yeah. is pretty amazing that they can take this all in. You know, I wish I was younger again. Like we're old school and the younger generation, I've been having a few conversations with a lot of the young audience. They wanted me to ask you, when are you guys going to metaverse the tracks? When can I get involved and, and participate and maybe even make the team? Or how do I become more active, engaged with the uh, McLaren so, racing team? So that technology is almost here. We're actually, um, that's in development. So I, I think it won't be long before, you know, Sunday you can log on uh, and, and race Lando yeah. around Monaco and be <laughs> in the race. So that, that technology is around the corner. That's the shadow thing too, developing. I see that eSports, just quick. Correct. I know you've got to go on, but last minute we have here. eSports, what's the future of eSports with the team? eSports has been great for the sport. You know, you know, it's gone from, you know, when I was growing up, it was video games <laughs> and now it's, it's real simulation. Yeah. And uh, so we've held, uh, I think we're going four years into it yeah. now. We were the first team to really develop an eSports platform. and. We've had uh, competitors go on to help us with our simulation. So it's, it's real racing. We developed the race car yeah. before it goes on the racetrack. It's in simulation and that's where eSports And this, would, this is the new advantage. This is a new normal. This is where you guys see the, the data driving the advantage. Definitely. And I think the other thing it is, you know, some stick and ball sports you can play in school and motor racing has historically been karting, which can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now with eSports, you have a, a less expensive platform to let young men and women around the world yeah. put a steering wheel in their yeah. hand and go, and go motor racing. So I think it's also uh, going to kind of bring that younger generation of fan yeah. into the sport. Just so much collective intelligence, potentially competitive advantage, data, again, data coming up. Final word uh, to end the segment, Splunk, big partner on the data side, obviously helping you guys financially as well, as you do need some sponsorship support to make the team run. Um, what's the relationship with Splunk? Take a minute to talk about the plug. It's, it's, been, uh, it's been great. You know, they're, they're two big contributors. We need a lot of money to run the racing team, so they're a great partner in that respect. But more importantly, they're helping us with our whole data journey, making smarter, quicker decisions. So their contribution to being part of the race team and we use their technology um, it has been great. And I think, um, you know, if I look at our technology partners, uh, we have many that yeah. all contribute to making us a better racing team. I mean, it really is nice. It's data in action, it's teamwork, it's competitive, it's fun. That's kind of a good, good I, rubric. I, I, I think fun is the center of everything yeah. that we do. It's the center of everything yeah. Splunk does. Because I think if you have fun, people enjoy yeah. kind of working a little bit harder. <laughs> uh, we're seven days a week and, uh, you know, a lot of teammates, you got to work well together. So I think if you're having fun, you enjoy what you're doing, then it doesn't feel like work. Congratulations on climbing up on the rankings there, I think, and your team, two great drivers. Thank Thanks you for coming on theCUBE, we appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we're here at theCUBE. We like to have fun here and get all the action on the tech side. Obviously, F1 is technology enabled, data driving the advantage, and driving to survive is a great Netflix series. Check it out, McLaren's featured heavily in there and got a great team. Zach Brown, CEO, thanks for coming on, appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having me. I'm Sean Furrier, your host. Thank you for watching.